There are a lot of glues out there, especially with the popularity of crafting. You'll see a lot of glues for different purposes and you're not gonna need all of them. I'm gonna walk you through a lot of the common glues and some specialty glues and talk about what works for what application and what you might wanna have in your crafting kit. What we all know and love is our classic Elmer's glue. This is something that every student has in their classroom and it's a water-based glue. It goes on white and dries clear but it has a lot of water content. It works great for kids' projects. You could add some glitter to this, and we all know adding macaroni and what that looks like on construction paper. So this is a good all-purpose glue that you already might have lying around. And if you're working on something that's paper to paper, it can cause a little bit of rippling. It has a higher moisture or water content, and you get that buckled, very wavy effect. And if you're working on something like a collage, that has a lot of little components, something that you've spent a lot of time on, you wanna look for a glue that's not gonna have that water content, that's not gonna cause that rippling. But it can be great to water down and use for other applications. You can add some water to Elmer's glue and use as a fabric stiffener if you're working with some craft projects that you wanna sculpt your fabric. You can also water it down and use it for paper mache even. So you may be most familiar with this. Now, if we wanted to step up just a little bit, there's something called PVA. It stands for polyvinyl acetate, which sounds big and scary, but actually you can find this in the craft store. It's often with bookbinding supplies and you can get, buy it in little bottles or in large tubs even. But really what it is, is a pH neutral white glue, very similar to Elmer's. And this is gonna give you a really quick drying, easy application with very little rippling. It has a lot less water in it. These are two pieces of paper that were glued together with PVA. And if you are working on paper to paper, something like drawing out a stripe or a little wiggle line may not be appropriate. Instead, you'd want to apply your glue with a brush. So let's put some of our PVA here. And this is something that now you can actually find at the craft store. If I want to glue something like this circle, it's paper on the back and glitter on the front, and I've got a little piece of cardstock like an ATC or just a collage base, and I want to glue these together, what you can do is use a brush. That's going to help you get a nice even coat and reduce that rippling effect. You always want to start from the center and work out so that you can get a really thin, even coat of glue. This is going to help prevent pockets and bubbles like this. If you were to just apply this straight out of a tube or a little bottle, you get all this uneven glue. But if you use, apply it with a brush, then you get really clean, flat, even glue. And this will dry clear. Both the Elmer's and the PVA will dry clear. PVA is much more quick drying as well, so this will help you work on projects more swiftly if you're working on a lot of different components. But I don't always have to use a wet glue. If I'm working paper to paper and I just need a really quick adhesion, I can use something like a glue stick. And there are lots of glue sticks on the market as well. You, you have your kind of standard office or target version that you can just get in a big pack. And these will work okay for an immediate adhesion, but they don't last that long. They can potentially unstick later. If you go to an art supply store, you may find something like an Uhu stick or there's also this new glue stick that comes in a silver tube. It's Italian and if you smell it, it smells like almonds. And either of these will work really well. I also love this giant craft stick that Scotch makes. It goes on really smoothly, has a really big glue tip surface. And you're gonna apply that in the same way, just covering the entire back of whatever you wanna glue down and sticking it down. And this works for any paper to paper. If you're making a card or working in a sketchbook, this is a really nice handy thing to have. You might also be familiar with the glue stick that has like a purple or a blue color. It will dry clear, but it's really good for kids so they can see where they're applying their glue. You do want to make sure that you're buying a permanent glue stick if that's what you want, is to have a permanent adhesion. Now they're not going to work for things that are really heavy like cardboard or even really heavy cardstock, but they're great for just quick paper to paper projects. There are also removable glue sticks out there for just temporarily placing things. You have more options with paper to paper, especially in something like a collage format where you're working with lots of different types of papers or lots of layers, you have even more options. There are things like Yes Paste, which is a wheat paste base. It has a Vaseline-like consistency, but it's not oily. It is a water-based glue. You can apply this actually with something like an old credit card or old library card. Just dip it in there 
And it's great because you can squeegee it on in a really fine, thin layer, and it's not going to ripple. People love this for collage and working with lots of layers. So I just squeegee this on. I'm working on a scrap paper, working from the center out. Let's fold away our glue. This is a good little studio habit. Just get that glue out of the way. And we can attach this. Let's tear it in half. We can attach this to another paper surface. If you're working with collage. Now if you have a little spot that you missed, you can carefully pick up a corner and just shimmy your credit card underneath there that has a little bit of that glue left. And you can see these lie really nice and flat. You don't get any of that rippling. So this is great for a lot of paper on paper. If we want to add just another layer, same thing. Just squeegee that on. Make sure you get nice, even coverage all the way. And you can see it's glossy where you've applied glue, and it's going to be matte where there isn't any glue. Tear that or cut it and just glue right on top. And you just get really nice flat adhesion. I can just fold that over to the back. And this cleans up with water. We'll move our glue away so that we don't get it on our little collage here. This is a more specialty type of glue, so you want to make sure that you're really going to be working with a lot of paper-to-paper -paper projects before you go out and invest in it. Something else that you might be familiar with is something like Mod Podge or a gel medium. These are both clean up with water. They dry clear. They come in different finishes. You can have a matte finish. They come in heavier bodies. They also have glossy finishes. And Mod Podge, definitely something that I was familiar with as a kid. It's something my mom had in the back of a cabinet. And gel medium is something more that I use now. Both Mod Podge and gel medium work in a really similar way. You may be familiar with Mod Podge because of decoupage or collage. And gel medium is what I like to call a miracle medium. Both of them work as both a glue on your base and as a top coat to seal in your project. Both of these I would apply with a brush. This guy happens to be a matte version of the gel medium. Tear off a little strip here. Goes on, like most glues, whitish and will dry clear. You can see my paper is curling because it's a lightweight paper. But the matte medium works really nicely even with delicate papers, things like old dictionary pages or lacy papers. Just press that down. And again, this is going to dry nice and flat as well. And it, if you've missed a corner, you can take your brush, or you can even use your credit card trick, and just come in and just glue down any spot you might have missed. If you're not familiar with gel medium, it was something that was developed to mix in with acrylic paints, either to change the body and consistency or the finish so that you can get a matte or a glossy finish. It's something that you can find in the craft store, but it's usually lurking in the paint aisle. Don't discount any part of the craft store, the kids aisle, the paint sections, things that you may not walk down. There's a lot of good crafting supplies hiding there. Mod Podge will work in a similar way. It's a recipe from the 60s, hence this really vintage looking graphic comes in a lot of different versions now. The Mod Podge, the original one, also comes in glossy and matte. And it's going to be similar in the way you use it as gel medium, but it's going to look a little bit more like Elmer's glue. And it tends to be very liquidy and wet. It can cause a little bit of rippling, so you do want to be careful. And I would brush it on in the same way. You want to get a nice even coat. You don't want to over glue. That's where you can get those ripples and bumps. And with both gel medium and Mod Podge, you can also apply on top to seal in. This works really nicely for decoupage and for certain types of mixed media or collage. You do want to check though that you're working with one of the mediums in the finish that you want. So if it's matte, you're gonna, it's going to dry in a matte finish. But if it's glossy, then you're going to have a glossy coat on top of your work when it dries. Just set that guy aside to dry. A step up 
in strength is gonna be tacky glue. And I love tacky glue, it's a very all-purpose glue. Tacky glue has a really thicker body. It's good for quick adhesion for things that you need to set up, things like buttons or little bits of wood or even small pieces of metal. This is gonna give you a nice, quick stickiness that you don't have to babysit. It's gonna go on like most other white glues, but it is much thicker. So if I place a little dot, it's gonna really hold its shape. It's almost like, you can imagine if you're making macaroons or some kind of baking where you have like a really stiff batter, this glue is gonna act like that, which makes it great for things that you want quick adhesion, things that are gonna set up nicely and quickly. It also dries clear, but if I wanted to attach something like a button or a piece of yarn, anything that's a little bit heavier in body, this is gonna work really well. Now it does have to set up, but you can see that that's not slipping or sliding around. It's really holding its shape there. This is another great all-purpose glue that you can use for paper to paper or things that are even heavier, cardstock to cardstock or anything that's in that nature. Then we get into more specialty glues. Things that are considered fabric glues or felt glues, and you wanna test those out to see depending on your project. Something like the tacky glue, you can probably use on fabric and felt, but you do really wanna test things. In certain situations, glues that are specific will work nicely for the project, but something like tacky glue I can use on leather to leather, that will work. We can even test it on some felt. Felt is really its own beast because it is thick, but very porous. And so glue has a tendency to just go right through. This is our Elmer's put those two pieces together and set them aside. Let's try our tacky glue, which is gonna be a little more viscous and sit more on the surface. You can already see. Put those two together. Then you have something more like fabric tack, which isn't gonna clean up with water. It's something that you would probably have to clean up with acetone. You just wanna read your instructions. And it's a little more toxic. It's not gonna be your average kid craft kind of glue but it does work well for fabric. And you'll see it goes on clear and it's immediately very sticky. It doesn't have any water in it. It's almost gummy sticky. Set that guy aside. And then we can try something like Sobo glue, which is an all-purpose craft glue. It's gonna be somewhere in between our Elmer's and our tacky glue. When you first apply your glue, it's gonna feel like these are all gonna stick, but if you give it a minute, you'll see that the glue will start to soak into the felt and they're not gonna stick at all. So you really have to revisit it and see which glue is gonna work best. The Elmer's is really gonna start to absorb into the felt and not leave anything on the surface to adhere. Something like the tacky glue is gonna do a little bit better job. You can see as I peel it away, there's still a lot of glue there on the surface. And if I let that really dry, then it'll probably stick. The fabric tack is immediately tacky. It's even hard to peel up. It's really sitting on the surface and it's really gonna stick. And then the Sobo glue is somewhere in the middle. It's still sitting on the surface, but it's starting to absorb pretty rapidly. With felt, you really have to let things set when you're using a water-based glue. So you may wanna look for the label, depending on what you're working on, to really see what's appropriate. I know that the tacky glue will work on leather, but it doesn't necessarily say that on the packaging. You, at this point, you wanna also experiment with what you're using it for. Because there are variables, certain things will work, but you really have to let them dry. And if you're working on a project that you need immediate adhesion, you may wanna use a different type of glue. There are also things like wood glue, which, are great for actual wood to wood applications. It's going to take a while to set up. It's gonna dry very brittle and it turns yellow when it dries. And I really wouldn't recommend it for anything other than wood to wood projects. Then you have some heavier duty glues, things like spray glue and epoxies. This is where we really start to pull out the big guns. Spray glue is gonna give you really broad coverage quickly. It is not necessarily archival at all, and it doesn't clean up with water. It's usually permanent. You wanna read the manufacturer's instructions because sometimes it's repositionable in the first minute or so, but then it becomes permanent. This does work for paper to paper, but you really wanna use it on really large projects, things like poster board onto cardboard, anything that you wouldn't wanna get wet with like a white glue. 
And epoxy is something that I've just started using pretty regularly recently, but it works so well for what it's meant for that I just can't go back. And it's great for things like magnets where you need a really permanent, really heavy duty weight glue. It does take a while to set up, but I love these two-part epoxies that you mix together for each use, and you can get them from the hardware store, sometimes even the craft store. You can just pop these guys off. You may want to wear gloves and work outside. I love working with the epoxy in the little syringe so I can use small amounts at once, and it gives me a really even distribution of both kinds because you have to mix them together. But if you do find the kind that comes in tubes, you just want to carefully squeeze them out in even proportions. You also want to mix them in something that you can throw away. You're not going to mix this in a glass dish. Often they come with a little plastic blister pack that just lays on top as part of the packaging, and you can actually mix the epoxy in that. These two guys will squirt out in pretty even proportions and then you need to mix them together you can use something like a q-tip or the back of your paintbrush and once they're well mixed you have just a minute or so in working time and these are great for making magnets especially if you want like a heavy duty magnet that then is not going to pull away from your refrigerator leaving the magnet on your fridge and the decorative part in your hand you usually have to let these set up 24 hours before you can use them, but then this is super permanent and it works great for making like a little magnet or if you were to repair a piece of ceramic, anything that's non-porous, this is gonna work really well for, but this is heavy duty. Along with our heavy duty stuff, we've got our hot glue guns. Now you may have seen just your average craft hot glue. I used to use these hot glue guns all the time when I was a kid crafting with my mom and I actually hated them. I felt like everything just peeled apart afterward and it was so disappointing. But then I started working on large scale projects as an adult and doing window installations and hot glue became my best friend and that's because I switched to an industrial hot glue gun. All that means is that it's got a higher temperature and the glue is really going to hold once it sets up. You squirt out a bit. You can do it in dots or ribbons. You do get these little spider webby strings. So you have to be careful of that, but it is excellent for really quick, heavy duty adhesion. So cardboard to cardboard, when you're constructing something, this is what you'd use. And it takes a moment to set up. I don't want to say dry because it's not wet, but it takes a moment to set up. And then this is a very permanent adhesion. So I would go in for the, the heavy duty hot glue. Our last thing, which is somewhere between a tape and a glue, is a glue dot. And they come in all different sizes. You can find them on rolls. They're similar to that stuff that's on the back of your credit card when you get a new credit card mailed to you. It's kind of rubbery, and it may not be intuitive on how to use it immediately. You actually don't want to touch the glue dot itself. What you want to do is cut away a little piece of it. Here's our first one. I can just tear away the glue dot and I want to kiss it to what I'm going to glue down. So let's say I want to glue something to this surface. I can just go ahead and kiss it to that and remove this waxy paper backing and then just press what I'm going to glue on top. And that is a very quickly, very permanent adhesion. The glue dots are also really great for making glitter dots. You can just sprinkle some glitter, tap off the excess, and you get this perfect little glitter dot. They come in all different sizes. You can get little tiny mini ones for really small objects, something like even a button would work or a little tiny piece of metal. I have these Dresden paper foils. You can kiss it to the glue dot that's on the roll, peel that away, and then place that down. And you get a really permanent adhesion. Obviously, this is a lot of information about glue. And now you can look back and see what you have and realize that some of these now you can try on new projects even. But you're not going to go out and buy all of this at once. You really want to experiment and see what works best for what you're using it for. For me, my go-to kit is a really good glue stick, the tacky glue because I can use it on paper, I can use it on larger and heavier items, the gel medium because like I told you, it's a miracle medium, and the hot glue gun so that I can work on a large scale, things like cardboard on cardboard. Again, experiment, see what works, and then put it all in your craft kit.